Elise, hang with us because we're going to talk mm -hmm. about the weather a little bit more right now. So we are entering severe weather season, of course, that's here and across the country. Just last night, we had severe thunderstorm warnings for parts of our region, and the National Weather Service just confirmed that this afternoon that there was a weak tornado that touched down in Genesee County last night. Think of this. Each year across the country, an average of 88 people die in floods, 68 due to tornadoes, and 41 from lightning alone. Those are just averages. And that's why the governor's office and the National Weather Service have teamed up to declare that this is Severe Weather Awareness Week across New York State. Elise is back with me now, along with Mike Fries. He is the Warning Coordination Meteorologist at the National Weather Service's Buffalo office. We appreciate you coming in. Elise is going to start us off here. Yes, good afternoon, Mike. Great to be here and see you in person. So we're going to start off with a pretty simple question. We have Severe Weather Awareness Week every single year. What's the importance of this in your eyes? Well, we have awareness weeks for basically every type of weather threat that we see throughout the year, but severe weather awareness week is really important going into a really big changing time of the year. You know, most people think of Buffalo and they think of snow and, and lake effect, but every year we see hundreds of thunderstorms that do damage both uh, from straight line winds as well as usually a tornado or two in our area every year. And, and getting the word out for this is, is a really big part of what we do at our office. So Mike, the timing for this is really great because we booked this last week, right? Knowing that this was Severe Weather Awareness Week, um, but we had this severe weather yesterday. Thankfully, nobody hurt, but there was this tornado that touched down in Genesee County. I know that you were out there earlier today kind of surveying it. I wonder if you can tell us what you found there and what you would say to people. I mean, one of the nice things about living in this part of the country is that we don't have to deal with you know, the really strong tornadoes that they see in other parts of the country. We don't typically get the major deadly flooding that they get in other parts of the country. Um, but I guess as you were saying there, that doesn't mean that we're immune from severe weather, right? Right. Uh, severe weather occurs all over New York in any month of the year, actually. And it's important to remember that. I mean, we've had a really cool spring. We haven't had really very many tornadoes. Uh, but in, in the case like last night in Alexander in Genesee County, uh, there was a tornado that touched down and, and covered about three quarters of a mile uh, uh, crossing a state highway there. Um, so the, these threats exist in every month of the year, um, and it, it's important not to let your guard down to them. Elise? Yes, and on that note, we uh, for people who are really interested in weather and have this fascination, kind of like I do, you do offer another service where they can be helpful to their community. It's their storm spotter training program. I know you're still offering a couple courses, so could you tell us a little more about that program and why it's really a benefit to us as meteorologists? It's a benefit to the person who becomes storm spotter certified and then for the community as well, right? Well, our office out of Buffalo, we cover 16 counties in Western and, and Central New York, basically. And our personnel really mostly live right around Buffalo and, and all of the rest of that area. We need the help from people on the ground to get reports from storm damage and things like that that occur in all of those areas between where our personnel and in areas where our radar can't see particularly well. And that's the, the biggest impetus behind the Skywarn Spotter program. And we're, we will be training uh, online courses for those uh, right through the end of next month. Um, so visit our webpage if you'd like to, to sign up for that training. And Mike, I want to go back um, to the tornado in Genesee County, uh, just south of Alexander. You and I were talking in the commercial break. I mean, that is an area where there is a lot of wide open space, right? And this was a, a very weak tornado that touched down, but it actually did a little bit of damage. I wonder if, you know, for our viewers in that area and everyone who's curious out there, if you can share a little more about what you found when you went out there today. And I guess what that process is like when you guys actually go out into the field and you kind of survey the damage um, so that you can get a better picture about what exactly happened. So we actually have engineering analyses that look at different types of damage that's done to different buildings and hardwoods, softwood trees, different types of damage indicators like that that we look at that help us determine how strong the wind that hits either a building or some other type of, of structure is. And we, we look at the damage like what we saw in Genesee County from near the fire rec center uh, across the state highway and ending up in, in a cemetery south of Railroad Avenue. And we saw three different roofs that were damaged with different types of shingle damage or the roof, roof was actually uplifted. Hardwood trees were snapped off or uprooted and, uh, and also some, some windows were broken on a structure which gives us a really good handle on how strong the tornado likely was. And that's why we, we rated that tornado as EF0 and likely with peak winds of 85 miles an hour. 
Yeah, we know they can get a whole lot stronger than that, but nothing to sneeze at. And as you mentioned, there was some damage left behind. I think it's a reminder to all of us uh, that severe weather season is here. So so be aware of that. Our thanks to Mike Fries for coming in. He is the warning coordination meteorologist for the local National Weather Service. We appreciate your time. Thank you.